welcome everybody. This is um, June 12, 2023, and the select board meeting has been posted in three public places, right? Yes. And on the website and emailed to interested parties, so we can move forward. Frank and I are here. Pat, are you in, in on Zoom? Yes. And are you? Do you have a uh, suitable enough connection to um, have input? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Then let's um, go forward. Um, I'm going to start with the minutes from the prior meeting of May 22, and I didn't see any corrections to that, so I move to approve those. I second that. All in favor? Pat Aye. Hardy. Aye. All right, okay, great. And it's working. <laughs> and um, we have some guests here, and we might as well just um, jump right on to you guys, Deb and Sarah. Asia, are you guys in uh, on one topic or multiple topics? Um, basically, one topic. What okay. it is, it's uh, an update update on the housing committee meetings mm -hmm. and then some opportunities that are coming up that we just wanted to let the select board know about and see what their thoughts are. So um, we have a meeting coming up on Wednesday. We, we collated the information from the um, Hey Neighbor event. Um, we didn't get a whole lot of feedback. Um, on the postcards. We hope for more, but we got some. Mm -hmm. And um, we have some future events coming up. One is a DIY home creators event where we're hoping to put a panel together of people that are either doing ADUs or renovating properties and um, tapping into some of the state funding <coughs> resources that are out there and available and just kind of have people that have done it talk about what they've done. Um, and then we're hoping eventually, um, we're thinking in the late fall maybe, to have a um, community forum on housing. And we're also actively looking at opportunities of um, houses or, or land or places where um, developers might be able to put in a small housing <laughs> unit. Um, I did go to the um, Historic Preservation Day last week with Beth Kennett, and Sarah was there as a presenter. Um, and there was, there's a developer in Fairley that he moved back to his hometown, and he took an empty lot in Fairley and, and developed, put this uh, apart, small apartment building on it that's, you know, high energy um, resources and really, and he had tapped into a lot of the state resources, so it was just, there's a lot of opportunity out there, and he's willing to share with anybody that might want to contact him, so that's where we're headed. But Sarah has more to talk about. Yeah, so the, um, one of the things the committee is considering would, would want your input on is that the State Agency of Commerce and Community Development recently launched a project called Homes for All. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, there's a lot of information on the website. I actually printed out a couple of things to leave with you all. Um, the, it's a statewide effort to uh, focus statewide, quoting from the website, focus statewide attention on small scale gentle infill and incremental development as a strategy to address Vermont's housing and affordability crisis. There's four different components of the statewide project. One of the items is a missing middle home design guide there's going to be a builder's workbook and some training resources. One of the four elements is a Vermont neighborhood infill design case studies, which is a series of five case studies showing how missing middle housing building designs can be integrated into existing Vermont neighborhoods and communities using illustrated visualizations. These case studies and visualizations will be generated in partnership with five pilot communities. Um, and the pilot communities will each receive a half-day visit with project consultants. After the visit, communities will receive visualizations that serve as problem-solving tools for the community, illustrating strategies for advancing context-sensitive designs that meet city and town regulations and community design objectives that are feasible from a market perspective. 
stakeholders can use the test fit visualizations to consider alternative configurations and explore ways in which they can overcome some common and unique challenges of control development. So they currently have the plan for applications to become one of the five pilot they currently have opened the call for applications for communities to become one of the five pilot communities and what they're proposing to help with is perfectly in line with what the housing committee would like to do and with the help that the housing committee would like to receive. Um, the obligations on the part of the pilot communities are simply providing a space for the welcoming event, leading a tour of potential info locations and helping get the word out in their communities, all of which the housing committee is happy to take on the responsibility for. So I'll hand you this information, but the request, I think, of the Housing Committee is whether the Select Board would agree with the Housing Committee applying to be one of the pilot communities for these, essentially, just consultations and visualizations mm -hmm. of infill housing. And Sarah would help us with the grant. It's not a grant application, but with the application, yeah. you know, the proposal that we would submit. Yeah. Um, and certainly, you would see the proposal before it would go anywhere, but just we don't want to work on it and then find out that the, the select board is not um, in favor of it. Yeah. And we don't need an answer tonight. The, when's the due date July? I believe it's the end of, uh, fr I believe it's Friday of next week. Oh. Is the so you question. need an answer fairly up. It's at the end of June. It's oh, the, the end of June. June. Oh, so we'll have another meeting before that? Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. 24th, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's the end of June, not next Friday. Yeah, I can, I can actually double check my phone yeah. right now. Because yeah. it would be good to have, yeah. if we don't have another meeting before then, we need to have, uh, we'll have to have a right. special meeting. But, oh yeah, Friday, Friday, June 23rd. 23rd, it's our next meeting's on the 24th. So 24th is a Saturday. Oh, Saturday? Yeah, Our next meeting is the 26th. 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 Yeah. So we'll have to have a special meeting after we yeah. have some review of that. One, one thing we could do is uh, do a draft and send it out. I mean, the, what the, um, the commitment is, is we have a space to have. Yeah, which that's not a, a problem. I wouldn't think to have a space to... No. to have a presentation kind of work. No, that's that's a no. This no seems way. very similar to the the event that we had a couple months ago. Um, is this an offshoot from that? Um, but it's it's similar. So that one had been sort of spearheaded locally by GMEDC and the White River Valley Consortium, which I represent. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is more. This is top down from the state. Essentially, their work looking at really similar types of housing, and they're looking for communities to partner with to be illustrations of the concept. So actually that's one of the reasons I think Rochester would be very well positioned to be one of the pilot communities because you have already started having these conversations yeah. and had yeah. that event in the past. So it's not technically an offshoot because it's been this being in it instigated from the state side, no. but I think right. it's but very it's the same related. same topic. Yeah. Same idea. So we're kind of familiar with these. Right. This would be way to get actual professional infill. consulting feedback yeah. on yeah. that type of event. Yeah. yeah. Pat, do you have any input on that? Seeing as you're not here in the room, I can't read your face. <laughs> not at this time. It, it definitely seems worth exploring. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that'd be a good step if you guys want to put a draft together, and then we could um, we could circulate that. Then we could hold a, a special meeting to get together and, and give the official yeah. go ahead go on that. But I don't see any reason that we would put a block in front of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, does the um, state want commitments from this, the select board? I I don't remember. I actually I did look at the application to be one of the pilots, and it was very straightforward. But I don't remember off the top mm -hmm. of my head. The I, I just think it would be helpful mm -hmm. yeah. if yeah. if that were the case. Yeah. And if it were not the case, then I don't think we would um, go forward to submit it. Yes. Yeah. No, it sounds um. Promising. Yeah. Great. So I'll work on, we can touch base and I'll work on doing Yeah, we have a meeting on soon. Wednesday at 1 o'clock that's open to anyone at the Park House. We had um, advertised it. Kristen helped us um, and we put it on Front Porch Forum and I think on Facebook, but I'm not on Facebook. So at the Park House? <laughs> Hmm? At the park house. Park house, one o'clock yeah. in the um, dining what, room. What day? This Wednesday. 
Pardon me? This yeah. Wednesday? Yeah. This Wednesday, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, when would we want to do the draft by and have the special meeting, roughly? Or? When would you need it by the draft? Uh, what did you say? About midnight tonight? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I think we should get it early, yeah, too, so, yes, so we can know. read through it and see what it is. Yeah. I mean, okay. the yeah, sooner you can yeah. get it, the better, okay. I think. You know, I, I assume after this meeting Wednesday, we have more information, but it would be nice to, to have it, you know, by the beginning of next week, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In advance, so we could read yeah. through it. Sounds great. You know, that'd be great. So, well, great. thank you. That's it. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for working on that. Thank you. Um, is Asia back there? Uh, Asha. Yeah, Asha. Asha. Asia. So I'm actually here with the farmer's market, but do you want to just, do you want me to just dive in? Um, oh, that's on the agenda that's on the farther agenda, down? Yeah. Okay. Well, then why don't we... Um, you want to wait until... Yeah, we'll wait until yep. we get to that. Thank you. So um, is Greg Russ on Zoom? Yep. Yep. Um, you want to give us an update for the Riverbrook Drive culvert? Yeah. Um, so um, so we have funding uh, to implement the project. Um, so I've been uh, pursuing the uh, temporary and uh, construction easements and the permanent easements with the adjacent landowners um, and uh, just waiting for the for the last uh, bit of paperwork paperwork from uh, Java's uh, nephew Chris out in California. I called last week and said he, would, he was sending it. And once I have that, I'll I'll make sure the town has that on file. Um, and so I'd like to go and put this to bid. Uh, I know it's a little late in the in the year, um, but you know, fingers crossed, um, may be able to get someone to bite. Um, and um, um, so, um, you got money? You got plans? You got permissions? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we we want to put it to bid. Um, uh, we'll work with, um, so the partnership would do the bid. Uh, we'd, we'd work with Cricket on that. Um, uh, we'd we'd uh, do the contract and uh, oversee the implementation with Cricket. Um, of course, keeping um, uh, Frank and Cooter in the loop. Um, and we plan on, uh, you know, we put it in the Herald uh, and then on the state website. Um, and I just wanted to confirm, uh, uh, see if the town, so like we've done these in the past where um, we have the contractor um, supply a certificate of insurance listing the town as additionally insured. And I just want to confirm that that's what you guys want us to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, there is, I've talked to Frank a little bit about this, um, but I have to say it. Uh, there's a, the O&M from the funding uh, has to get signed by the town and, uh, I'll work with Frank on that, but I just wanted to I have to mention it. So, <laughs> uh, but that's it. Um, if 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 that all sounds good to you, you know, you guys, we can I can uh, go ahead and put this to bed and see if we can implement this year. If not, we'll we'll do it next year. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Thank just, you. Just let me know, Greg. Okay. All right. Yep. Thanks. Sounds good to me. Okay. Great. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. Good. All right. Next item on the agenda is the um, consideration and possible approval of the promissory note to uh, Mascoma Bank, loan number 6304243541100000 for $1,100,000. And this is for moving forward on the West Hill Bridge. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is um, a little um, background. This is basically working money, but that a lot of this we should be getting back. Yeah, we've got 775 cemented in grants and a flap grant from the U.S. Forest Service and 175 from the structures grant from the state. Um, we can apply for another 25 from the state after June 30th, I think. Is that correct, yep. Kristen, I think? So, and they assured us that we would be getting that. So we, we've got 800 secured for mm -hmm. 
this project and when we discussed it earlier in the spring we didn't feel we had any other choice but to go ahead with right. this whether it was right or not we did get the contractor to lower his bid a little bit um, by taking on some of the work on our own yeah. which we'll have to coordinate and that should be starting maybe this week um, they're looking at maybe putting the foot footings in this week mm -hmm. pouring a base there on one side so we'll have to do due diligence on that to get the contractor to do the cement yeah. testing so but it's moving forward the guy's doing a good job and he wants to get it done he's had a lot of issues too i guess with his other projects that he's on but he's yeah. going forward so pat if you got any questions about this project is moving forward very nicely every time i go by it's it's more has been done so so far no snag so i'm i'm fine with the promissory note this is an anticipation for bond right just so we can be clear that it's not yeah that you're borrowing all that yeah, yeah well, this this will be for the balance we'll be looking to bond in the end so mm -hmm. whatever's left we're not sure what's going to be left and, and it's won't. a draw not yeah. all at one time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah it'll, be it'll it. just be drawing as we need it. Uh, so we don't know what it'll be in the end until after it's all done. So, so I'd, I'd move to go ahead and, and um, set up this, this basically it's like a line of credit with Mascoma. And it's, yep. Yep. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So Pat, when you get back in town, you can come in and sign mm -hmm. off on this because they want um, all of our signatures on this. You got it. And it looks like they want a lot of all of our signatures. <laughs> 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 like Might be ten a pages of signature. <laughs> um, maybe we'll finish signing this at the end when we're signing the bills, so we can move forward with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a lot okay. there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you guys here um, want to talk about the farmers market some? Yeah, so um, I'm Asha Kennett, LaBeja Kennett. Um, I'm the manager of the Rochester Farmers Market. Mm -hmm. um, I have been for a number of years, um, been part of the community for the better part of 24, almost 25 years. Um, and the Rochester Farmers Market, I've been running it by myself for the last three years. Um, I'm here as a direct result of the last select board meeting. So I did watch the video um, after I was prompted to um, by community members and there was a lot of confusion in the meeting um, which led to a lot of misinformation. Um, so I'm here to, on the record, clarify certain things. I was misquoted. Um, and there were some things, some confusion and comments made on farmer's market policies. So to begin with, the farmer's market is a community event. It's a not-for-profit market. So Frank, you had mentioned in the meeting, they're, they're making money. So I'm not sure if you're referring to the farmer's market because the farmer's market's not making money. What it, the money that's made goes back into the market. Um, I, hundreds of my hours of my work are not compensated. Um, and I pour in quite a bit of my own money as well. And that's just what, and I'm proud to do it, I'm happy to do it because the community loves the farmer's market, let me say that. Um, and you know, the select board has brought up concerns with the grass and signage and I've met all those concerns. So my, I, I, my voice is shaking because I'm fairly upset. Last meeting, um, to hear you know my policies discussed and labeled as ridiculous and everything without me there to explain myself, I felt was unfair. Um, Do you that? No, not really. I mean, no, we can play back really. the video. It's, it's on yeah. video. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, on, it's on video. Okay. So anyway, so con to continue, so our I'm I'm just labeling the comments so that it's on public record the actual facts. Um, we're a community event. We're not for profit. We welcome non-agricultural vendors. Um, there was some misinformation that 
I had told Jan McCann something, which Jan says, what? I never said, you know, so again, that's mm -hmm. the danger of third party mm -hmm. communication at a public forum. Um, so did this stem from Jan yes. filing a separate park use application? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so as I said, um, I had had a conversation with Jan the year before and I said, look, we're such a small market, we're not actually covering our expenses with what comes in. That is why I ask all informational and nonprofit boots if they want to be part of the ring to pay in. It's $12 a week. Some people find money from sponsors or grants, like that's a prop, that's, that's doable. Jeff Gephardt has, has paid out of pocket before and that was what was called ridiculous. Um, he has never, he and I and the Climate Initiative and the Farmer's Market, I want to say on the record, we have a wonderful relationship and we have. This has never been a problem. Um, I think looking forward, you know, after this meeting, I've had talks with several community members who are concerned and they were saying, okay, well, let's start fundraising. Let's, you know, because if we want to allow vendors to come in without paying, um, we're going to need more sources of revenue. So as of this year already, we're not breaking even. I didn't want to raise vendor fees because these people making money, they're our community members, our neighbors. This isn't Walmart. Walmart's not coming to our market, okay? These are small vendors. These are small farmers, small producers, small businesses, and they're doing it to be part of something. So if not-for-profit or um, informational vendors want to come, unfortunately right now, I still have to pay for them under my insurance. Vendors have individual insurance, but I still have to pay for them under my insurance. My insurance goes up if I have more vendors. That's the way it works, unfortunately. That's just the way it works. So if they trip over a, one of their poles, I get sued. Not the market, me, because it's my name. It's a sole proprietorship. So it is a little personal. <laughs> um, that being said, I said to Jan last year, you are welcome to set up anywhere near the park. The library has a fantastic program on the gazebo. I mean, it's thriving. I don't know if you guys have seen, if you've come to the market, um, but it's thriving. So I said, you know, you're welcome to put a, a table right there. Take advantage of the hundreds of hours of work that the other vendors have done and use that busyness, like use it, definitely. We're welcome. I mean, the Harvest Fair, which is another fashion, like fabulous organization, they charge their informational nonprofit vendors too. They get a discount, but that event is, you know, to raise money for the fabulous organization. So I'm not alone in doing this. And, you know, if I were to consider changing the policy, I'd have to change it. Um, and it would mean finding more sources of revenue. And as of this year, um, I've had some people come forward and offer to sponsor music. Thank you to Catherine Shankman and Joe Shankman because they covered the cost of uh, the SNAP EBT software, which we have to pay for in order to run SNAP and EBT, um, which I had been paying for by myself. Um, and so all of these things factor into these policies, and I would be more than happy to explain why we do these things um, if I were to be asked. So that's all I really have to say. I was really disappointed. Um, to hear the select board's comments. And, you know, I have tried to adhere to all of the policies. And, you know, the community is incredibly supportive and loves the farmer's market. The musician's list fills up in February. You know, people are begging me in December. I have to tell people, not before the new year. Um, so I'm su super supportive and super grateful to the community for their support, I guess. I would have liked to hear a little more supportive comments from the select board members. That's all I have to say. Okay, so if Jan it gets a separate permit from the select board to yeah. be on there, then she doesn't um, incur liability under your insurance? She can't be in my event unless she pays in currently under our current policies. She is welcome to be anywhere else on the park. The gazebo is right there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know how we set up, but the gazebo, yeah. we open up essentially so that the gazebo, so that people can funnel right into the library program. And the library now has a thriving children's program, thanks to Maya, but also thanks to the farmer's market traffic. Mm -hmm. The kids who come to the farmer's market go to the library program. Yeah. So yeah, she's, I mean, I can't stop, like you guys said, I can't stop anywhere from being on the park. And before, we've had political groups, religious groups who've asked to be part of the market, and we've been like, well, we don't feel comfortable, but you're welcome to set up, you know? So mm -hmm. this is not new. 
And I'm not alone, I'm not the only market who does it this way. Well, I'm sorry if you felt um, that we were in the wrong spot there. Yeah, that's, that's um, not the way it was meant to be. Yeah. You know, we are rewriting the policy at some point, and there might be some use fees for using the park because of the cost of being there. It just is an environmental issue that happens, and we can't change that. I mean, it used to be you could have the park mode on a Friday or a Thursday to have it look nice for the weekend, but now I don't want him mowing it after Wednesday because if he does, it gets so much use on the weekends. And Friday is the farmer's market, which has a lot of use, and no offense to anyone, but it does cause an environmental issue with the park and it is a problem so we're trying to make it work for everyone yeah, and, sorry, and can you explain what the environmental yeah, yeah. issues are it's just the traffic everybody drives all over it parks all over it and there's just a lot of use and if you have where you don't have any rain for a while or whatever and it gets a lot of use in one spot Okay. The front would have been have ruined. Us, uh, I, I'm not picking up. on anybody. No, I'm just I saying I it's say just like a lot of driving all over. We don't drive all over. We literally back up to where we're going to be. Well, and it's and just done. it's not go. just driving all over, but everybody parks there too, and I understand that, and that's fine. So we're just trying to make it work for everyone, and it costs money to do there, all that. Mean by that though? And it costs money to do all that. And it pays, everybody has to pay for that. So it comes out of our budget. Yeah, but there was an event yesterday or today where car parking all around the park exactly the same way. I understand that. that. Did you talk to them the same way? I would, but I can't. Yes. You can't control that. Yeah. This is something okay. we can control. Okay. So there is a difference. The park is there for everybody to use. Yes. And that's fine. Yes, absolutely. You know? Uh, so if somebody stops by with their car and has a picnic, walks their dog, mm -hmm. doesn't pick up, pick up their dog poop, sure. you know, what do you do about that? You know, do you put signs up? Do you have, you know, so we're trying to deal with all that too. So N Nancy, you have a comment? I think, Asha, you made, a, you made some really good points. And I think that your points have clarified a lot of things, which in other years, I don't believe we've heard how the operation works uh, until tonight. And it makes a lot of sense. But I think it would have been helpful over the past few years if you had come to some of these meetings and explained exactly how your not-for-profit works. Um, we've asked, the board has asked lots of questions, but they don't get answers, and including that last meeting. Um, right. I've never had anyone reach out to me. Well, it was, the, the comments from the board were addressed to the people that were here making a presentation to use the park. Uh, they, no, they were saying that's ridiculous that the farmer's market's been asking the climate initiative to pay out of pocket. That's yeah. The, the, yeah. Yeah. Well, that yeah. was that was the last yeah. meeting, right? Yes. Yeah, but she right. also wasn't informed that she was yeah. going to be spoken about. Right. But if she would have been informed that she they were going to talk about the farmers market, she would have been. Yeah. Should have been tabled and. Well, the the, the climate initiative was that's presented as a different thing. You know, it, it was he was taking advantage, just yes, taking advantage of the fact that the farmers market is there to you know, Helps use that down. use that traffic. But in, in our perspective, why we maybe said that was ridiculous that he would pay is that that's um he's presenting information to as a representative of the town to try and help, you know, make things more efficient for people. So it was not ridiculous, you know, it was not meant to be an insult, please. I know you've taken it that way for sure. But it's, um, it's hard not to when I'm trying to do something nice for the community yeah. and rather than get encouragement and support, I'm constantly like fighting like the grass, the signs. It's but like, I think okay. that 
Jan is trying to do something nice with the shelter. She's yeah, trying to put sure. information out on the shelter. And we didn't stop And her Jeff is still up. doing the same thing. And their welcome is so big. Up. But when this came up at the last <laughs> meeting, it was, why would a town entity have to pay to, to show up on the park for a farmer's market when we didn't even know the rules of, right. it's a of your event. market. It's a technically a private event, which is why I have to apply to be there. So I have to. Well, the library there. has to apply to right. be there. Right. So no They're one. Not a private no event. one could walk onto the. No one could walk onto the gazebo, while Maya is running her program and just set up a political table. Right. Like people would be like, "Oh, wait a minute." They couldn't do it anyway, yeah. without coming to the town. So we have someone on Zoom that has a comment. Yes, um, Pat, our Slack board member. So I think what we need is, um, since they are an official nonprofit, they must have articles of bylaws. And so if we have that at hand and we know um, when we have conflicting uh, requests for the same day for the park, um, we know what would fit and what would not. And we know how to explain to the other entity about the farmer's market and how they should be situated. That way we're just more informed about what's going on and we can answer other people's questions more intelligently if we have the bylaw rules for the farmer's market. We are a, we are a not for profit. We have we don't have a 501c3, so we don't have a board of members or we are a really small market, so yeah. we just don't have the capability of doing that right now. Um, well, can, again, you up, can you write the can you write those that criteria up for participants and then people that would not participate so i have our our vendor form rules which all markets have the vendor form i look through all the other markets and they don't have like if you're a nonprofit or if you're informational like i don't see those on any of them um i mean i can give you the the vendor form agreement that says that you have to produce or make at least 60 to 70 percent of what you do you know so on there it's not there isn't even anything about the informational or um, non-sellers because that's just never been an issue until now. Yeah. It sounds um, like it is an issue now, so maybe it is something that should be written in or at least noted to us so that we can make, we, we can identify what, what works and what doesn't work and we can explain that when we have meetings. Yeah, and you know, um, again, if asked, I'm welcome to, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to explain. Um, I was just caught off guard. Yeah. Um, which I. So were yeah. so you. Uh, uh, just one suggestion. I don't think so. It's a good idea to change uh, ta a day for that other organization, because again, there is a still on farmer market people coming, and there is nothing wrong if there is a little bit over their table. They may be more interested to go take a look what they have to offer instead of if suddenly. Yeah. Nowhere in the middle of the park uh, uh, of that uh, some day there is one little table. It has less. Yeah, there's chance there's for no people. question that it makes sense yeah. to to bundle these informational things on there, and if they come and and they get their own permit to come and be on the park, then that takes that responsibility off of you then, right? So that would actually be helpful. If they're not in the event space, insurance is really tricky about this. Like if they're part of the event, then they're covered under my insurance. So they have to be market, markedly not part of the event. So like the library is markedly not part of the event. So if a kid trips on the gazebo, like that's not, I don't get sued. Mm -hmm. um, and Tasha, last year they did it. They had table on the side. Yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah. it was very good. And a few people, good. quite yeah. a few people came yeah. to see them. Okay, so that's something that we were yeah. not aware of that, that mm -hmm that requirement so in the future if, when they have a request to do something like that uh, informational because they're not there making money they're right. they're disseminating information on sure. behalf of, of the town's people yeah you know, and so, so that's something that like i said <laughs> if our if i find ways to increase our budget like maybe that's something we can discuss but that would be a discussion i would have with my vendors you know, with the market community yeah. um, to see how they all felt about that rather than yeah. just me deciding. Like, I do this for the community. It's not what I want, what I decide, because I'm not making money off this. Yeah. So I'm doing what I feel is best for the market vendors. Um, and if 
at some point we want to have that discussion, like that we can have that discussion. But again, it's not my call. And you don't, you don't, you're not upset. You don't have problems with us giving permission to like the shelter committee no. or the. Energy she set up. It's a huge. Right? It's a huge yeah. part. In fact, oh, right. in fact, people are welcome. That point that oh yes, that is there. yes, yes. Yeah. Do you I, have tape absolutely. that goes like around your vendors? No. Like, no. Is it, okay. So I'm not required to do that. During COVID, I was required to yeah, do that. Right. Yeah. I had to mark um, exactly where, and actually COVID took out like all of the money that had been in our budget that we had racked up because yeah. we had so many um, extra. Yep. We had to provide max, max. I mean, it was awful, but, um, but we did it. Um, so we had to mark it out. Now it's a little bit more loosey, uh, goosey about that. Like okay. some markets are in parking lots, and so you know it's they don't really. But it's it's pretty much who is part of your event, okay. mm -hmm. which is tricky. Mm -hmm. So going forward, then um, for Jeff or um, Jan that want to have present information, we would just mm -hmm. specify yes, you know, okay, well, okay, a permit to do that, but be aware of that. Even though you're piggybacking on right. the energy of the farmers market, it's a, a need a separate you can't join separate the location. Can't yeah, and actually, um, I'm not going to speak for the climate initiative because Jeff contacted me personally mm -hmm. after all that, and um, you know they're working on grants and they're like they're working on a way to because they really enjoy being part of the farmers market. Well, yeah, I would think yeah. that makes it more of a big yeah. thing, and, and we're talking yeah. about twelve dollars. It's right. not like you know. Right. Big, so sponsors are, you know, so again. Um, Paula, Kevin, have yeah. you guys got any input on this? Or? Well, I'm just really glad to see the beginning of this open communication. And if this yeah. had been the case from the beginning, um, probably we wouldn't have these issues. Yeah. And I, I hope it can continue with everybody keeping an open mind about it and trying to understand the concerns of the select board and the concerns of the market as well. And that's pretty much it. Uh, as vendors, we have no problem with nonprofits being there. Um, in a way, it makes for a stronger market in, to have those people on the yeah. park. Mm -hmm. um, just because if there's not very many of us, there's one more, and it just makes it look better from the road, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. So really don't see where there's a big issue here and it um, yeah. sounds like it's pretty well resolved. Yeah. Well, it's a good opportunity to open the communication between yeah. right. the select board, the market. It's, it's yeah, like Nancy it's a lot said. Of area out of the way. Yeah. Really. So please accept. Um, well, I can't speak for the whole board, but for me, and an apology for if you were offended yeah, by, me too. you know, the, um, the navigating the, the permit structure that we have here and the, the request that we had. Cause we felt a little offended, too, so, yeah. you know, that's the way we thought it, too. But um, So we're glad to get it out of the way. Yeah. Or at least I am. I don't know about you, but we're moving forward. Yep. It's a good way to do it. And as my daughter... As a father, thank you very much for your kind word. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. And by the way, I'm losing money too. Yeah. Dad, can you go to hardware store yeah. by this? Can you go? Yeah, he's. <laughs> you think I got money back? No. <laughs> it never ends. <laughs> Let's get a zucchini layer. <laughs> I'd love that. I would really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you. In the market, we're glad to have it. Yeah. I think it's a big asset. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. everyone that I've talked to would be devastated if it was not there. Yeah. All right. Um, on to more. Um, Things. Is the Windsor County Sheriff Department contract, does he ever come and cruise by the market when you're there? No, I, I, I went to a meeting with him the other day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he's like really excited that Rochester is investing and him being here more. Yeah. Right? I and mean, he wants to do more like school community yeah. stuff. And, yeah. Yeah. He's really excited. So we have that contract here. Yeah. Um, 
the ordinance. Where is that? The contract's in there somewhere. It's stuck in, it's stuck in there. Mm -hmm. right. That's why there are so many blue things to sign on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and this is for the time period um, from July 1. Um, 23. Yeah, this is, uh, looks like a typo. That says 22. It's like we're going back in time. So it be July 1, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. Thanks. Okay. So um, I'd move to approve that contract with the um, Windsor County Sheriff's Department. Second that. I hope. Okay. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I do you know how often they are in town? He hasn't been here for a while, couple of weeks. A while. It's been it's been a couple of weeks since he's been in town. They were here last Friday. They were. I, I saw him. Yeah, I can't remember. He, in the he had a, he had two guys with him the last time yeah. I saw him. I think they're probably training somebody new. He came in Friday uh, to um, introduce a new guy I, to Julia and myself. Saying here an average of eight to twelve hours per week, um, yeah. which will be rotating, and documented on a monthly basis. Yeah. It's showing on their monthly invoice. They, mm -hmm. On the air invoice. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it shows their mileage and then the dates that they were here. All right, and after that, we have a driveway permit for GT21 Forest Lane. <laughs> yeah, John's all right with that. Yeah, he is. He's had <laughs> yeah. a chance to look he at that. He said that they're going to have to, it's kind of steep. Yeah. <laughs> you know where Forest Lane is? It's the first put, the first turn off the access road mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to the right, and it, out there just past the old Nordine house yeah. on the left mm -hmm. and it's I, I wasn't sure there was another lot in there but he said it's going to be a steep driveway but that's what we, they we looked it up on the map and it when you come into Forest Lane there's an entrance there but you wouldn't be coming off the uh, main access road you'd no, be coming in it's Forest coming Lane. coming off Forest Lane coming off Forest Lane yeah it's going okay, to be so steep that. it's down in the yeah. wall a little bit there all right so I'd move to approve Second it. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Harvey says aye. <laughs> she had the broken spoke. <laughs> and um, speaking of the park, we have a um, application from the Green Mountain Suzuki Institute. Um, Pam Reed is the one that um, applied that, and that is going to be they're here for a week, as everyone knows. So the event here is for their opening event, I believe, on Thursday, July 13th, from 5 to 7, and um, picnicking and um, a fiddle concert. So I'm glad that we have the Suzuki Camp coming once again, and I would move to approve this one. Second it. All in favor? All right. Harvey says aye. Okay. And um, then there's also the application for Suzuki Week ice cream cookie cart. And that's on July 7th to the 14th, um, one of those afternoons in there. I guess it's weather dependent. Um, teaching, it says Mary Beth um, Tebis. And she, um, part of this is uh, about teaching their son to, about serving others. So, but um, yeah, the ice cream social, I'd, I'd move to approve that. <laughs> Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, 
and um, Tony, thanks for hanging in there. And I <laughs> hear um, lots of um, action on the library roof lately. Yeah, so it seems to be going along rather nicely. Yeah. They had to put uh, plywood on underneath, but mm. you see that. Uh, the library will be closed tomorrow because it'll be, they'll still be working, of course. Uh, but thanks to the Crosby's, it's really moving along nicely. Uh, there is, uh, well, we also have a trustees meeting tomorrow night, and I think that'll be at the library. It'll be after, it'll be at 5.30. So we'll be able to get in there, I guess, for that. Uh, there is coming up this weekend, Saturday, a reception celebration for Jeanette and her retirement mm -hmm. from two to four. Uh, at the uh, library? Uh, no, oh, that's that's on the park. That's you must have had that. Okay, yeah. I, I, that's right. We signed a permit. You yeah. must have that. Yeah. Oh, that's weak. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So, I think okay. that's it. Great. That's Thank you. Nice to see that action happening over there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You got any um, any news from the highway front? Uh, <laughs> other than the bridges. <laughs> the bridge and and. Uh, John's in the process of trying to figure out what he's going to do with the, one of the grants we received. Uh, I think it's a, the, what was that? Just not a structures grant. What was that one for Bethel Mountain? 60000 or something? Mm. 48. I think he's look, looking at a game plan for that for Rogers and Brook. Uh, we've got to sit down and talk about it. And we haven't had a chance to. He's he's been grading roads and cleaning things up and just keeping yeah. up with it. Yeah. yeah. Doing the best he can. Had a breakdown today. Teddy broke down over in Forestdale. I don't know what how that all came out, but <laughs> just blew a hose, so he was had to repair. But yeah. I'm not sure what 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 they wound up doing, but all's good. All right. Um, Terry's not here to talk about utilities unless he's on Zoom. <laughs> no. Nope. Is um, Jeff in there? Yes, he is. Hey, Jeff. Uh, good evening, all. Um, I guess uh, the things I should report, um, uh, probably the first one you may already know, but the uh, Green Mountain Power electric vehicle charger is uh, operational. Uh, there are two um, charging uh, stations uh, per pedestal. Um, on each pedestal, there is one CHAdeMO uh, connector and one uh, CCS connector. Um, so these are fast chargers. They're not superchargers like the Teslas have, but they're fast chargers. The CHAdeMO was installed because the Public Service Board does not want the original Nissan LEAF um, to be without a means of charging while they're on the road. Um, it's a little bit of a strange policy because um, it's a one size fits all. Um, the Nissan LEAF gets about 70 miles of range uh, on its battery charge. So it's not the kind of vehicle that's sold in very um, uh, rural um, situations and, and for the most part. But uh, it's great that uh, GMP put it there and be we, um, we'll continue to work with them and, and monitor things, see how it's working for them as well. Um, we had hoped to do an electric vehicle demonstration day this year and to celebrate that charger. But the Valley Energy and Climate Action uh, Committee is, is going to dial that one back. Um, we have uh, science, we have agreed uh, to participate with Randolph and Bethel on uh, what's called a Window Dressers program. Window Dressers is a nonprofit started in Maine um, and spread to uh, Vermont and, um, and actually New Hampshire is starting to pick up on it. Um, it's a better community building um, uh, kind of activity than the EV demo day would be. Uh, we will be um, 
measuring windows for um, interior inserts. Um, the way this uh, program works, you set up a management team, uh, you recruit measures, the measures really are doing, the, there's outreach, there's the measurement, um, and um, the sizes uh, determine the cost of it. The frames are built with pine, can be either white or natural, and a uh, polyolefin plastic is used to wrap both sides of the window insert. Um, so it creates uh, two more additional air spaces um, in each window that is treated. Um, there are provisions to provide the windows at no charge to uh, low income folks. Um, and uh, we hope uh, too to uh, measure and offer and uh, provide the uh, select board with uh, an option to uh, consider regarding the uh, town office. Um, we, as I mentioned, we're collaborating with Randolph and Bethel on this, and the community build will actually occur in uh, November, um, starting the 10th, I believe, in November, go for five, six days, dependent upon the number of, uh, of uh, inserts sold. Uh, Randolph did this last year, and uh, they had 187 um, windows installed, uh, probably. Uh, something like 30 to 40 um, actual homes being treated there. Um, let's see, uh, there'll be more about that coming up uh, with a lot of PR um, as we seek to uh, recruit volunteers. Um, I attended the first meeting of Mont Council on Rural Development's Climate Economy work with Bethel um, there, they, Bethel and, and Vermont Council on Rural Development is seeking ways for energy coordinators and committees to collaborate. Um, one possibility that they want to discuss is, is uh, a possible shared uh, energy coordinator, uh, which would be a paid position. Um, so I'm just monitoring what's going on and we'll report back to you guys. I have no authority to make any call on any of that. Um, so. Uh, it's just uh, to keep you up to date. Um, also, uh, just uh, use the forum here to uh, mention that uh, Midge uh, Scanlon is uh, seeking volunteers to clean up um, the high school and ready it for the Suzuki camp. Um, they uh, I believe it is Tuesday and Wednesday that uh, in fact, let me dial over here and get it so I get it right. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, the group will gather at the high school for the cleanup. Uh, it goes from 9 a.m. till noon and then uh, a one to four each of the two days. So uh, hopefully uh, others can spread the word and maybe participate. Martha? You're on mute, Martha. Sorry, I just wondered if Jeff meant like tomorrow and Wednesday of this week before the paper comes out or the following week? Uh, this is tomorrow. Okay, so I'll just mention that she was looking for them. I, there's no point in me really putting much about it because it'll happen right. after before the paper. Okay, I just wanted to check, I'm sorry, thank you. Yeah. I'll mute myself. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Hey, uh, do you have a number for the, the charger down there as far as someone to be in touch with? Apparently, one of them's not working. Okay, Zach Casey. Um, Zach, is, I, Zach is doing it. I can get a hold of him. I, I wasn't sure who was going to be spearheading it after it was installed. I'll, I'll, be, I'll get in touch with Zach. I know Zach. So. Yeah, I haven't used it uh, myself as I charge at home. Um, the number I have for Zach, um, there's a 229-7913, his business, and the mobile phone is 802-373-8853. Uh, okay, thank you. 
I was going to say, Jeff, um, thank you for um, keeping an eye and, and being um, uh, reporting back on this the movement to create a coordination of the energy position. I just want you to be aware that we're very appreciative of your energy and and um, and we will not commit you to more than that without your expressed desire to do so. <laughs> I'm not looking for a job. <laughs> I, I've said yes too many times already. You sure? And I know you guys have, and gals have too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Uh, um, Kristen, any um, grant updates that um, we yeah, haven't talked about yet? I've got a couple. Um, our requisition number three was sent in on um, Friday the 2nd for the high school study. Um, we sent in a rec for $9,226.74. Um, I'm expecting that will hit our bank account soon. And Cricket submitted today um, the stream alter alterations permit application to the Rivers Program um, to the state of Vermont with regards to the retaining wall. Uh, yeah. So that has been sent in, yes. Cool. Yeah, that's all set to go. I, I got a call into Two Rivers uh, to Rita, she was going to look to see if there's some piggyback money we might be able to get for mm -hmm. that because it protects the sewer line there. Yeah. And she was going to let me know, but it might be, if we can get extra money for it, we might just wait until next year to do it, do the project. Um, because it's getting late in the season one. Yeah. And number two, if, if we can get extra money, it might be a year out before we could, could get receive it. the funds yeah. and and if we can it'll give us it'll free us up some more of money that we we're going to put there mm -hmm. for another else. project yeah. that we could use mm -hmm. and there's definitely a couple that we need to do so All right. uh, um, there is, it's not exactly old business, but I, we did get a letter from the planning board um, asking us about, um, that, well, this is um, it's not something that we can do anyway because it's not been on, we didn't post it on the agenda, basically. It's well, put it under employee issue, sorry. Under employee issue? Okay. For um, executive session even though it's not a paid position. Because we do want to advertise the fact that we're looking for people interested in being on the planning board. And, and, the, and the issue here is someone that we did appoint to the planning board that has been AWOL and not really involved at all. So there's, um, and that would be a public um, decision to, to take that position away from them. So, um, but I don't think we um, need to really do that in executive session because we're, we're interested in having it made known mm -hmm. that we, um, we're looking for, for people that are interested in being part of the planning process. So, but we can't make that decision now. We would have to put it on the agenda, I think, for our next meeting. So this is just a preparatory, um, preparatory to that. Warm up? Yeah, warm up, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should post that on the website and mm -hmm. also uh, perhaps Martha put some blurb in the paper there that we're looking for volunteers for the... Is there just one position that... Yeah, I believe so. I will include that in this article, you know, about the meeting that you discussed, the fact that the select board is looking for some, um, uh, for a member for the planning board. A yeah. member, am I correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else out there in Zoom land have something they want to comment on? No. Nope. Everything looks quiet. All right. Boy, um, if we just talk another minute, it'll be an even hour. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't we have can to. do that in executive <laughs> session, can't we? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, thank you all for coming, and I'd move to adjourn.